Good morning, everyone. Aloha. It's Monday at 11, and this is the Neutral Zone. Welcome. Aloha, everyone around the world and around Maui. This is Jason Schwartz. I am the host here at the Neutral Zone, MauiNeutralZone.com. We are on 88.5 FM, KAKU, the voice of Maui. And we are simulcast on Akaku Maui Community Media TV to all us old guys. Channel 55 simulcast. So if you're listening live, you are welcome to call in at 808-873-3435. If you're not listening live, you won't be able to call in. But we are a call-in, call-out talk show, which means we talk to guests many times and have now for, wow, six full years. June of 2018, we began. Uh, Here in a couple of shows, I'm going to go on hiatus. I sort of uh, taken a health hiatus, having an operation and uh, getting ready for it and afterwards getting ready for it. And uh, we are going to go on a different tact when we come back. Uh, That tact will be more expansive and more focused on music and art. And, um, you know, just so you know, um, I've been doing this since June of 2018. The original intention was to do political interview shows and be in the middle and take no sides, but be there to have everyone talk in a neutral space. And then, uh, by the way, the laws are written for politics, needing to give equal time to all the political candidates in a race, even if they're not on my show. If we are show on for an hour, they have to give an hour to a political candidate for the equal time that goes with radio. So I changed the whole notion, and I thought, let me use it as a neutral zone and bring on interesting people in our community and from around the world, some, and to also bring up important environmental solutions that I thought we should be implementing here on Maui and be an example to the world. As some of you know, or many of you who have been watching me for years, I've been involved in Maui's politics uh, since, gosh, since I got here in 1988. But after I formed the nonprofit in 1991, the Maui Arts and Music Association, with the purpose of to promote art and music and culture and educate people about environmental solutions that we could implement here on Maui and be a global example to the world and have our tourists go home with more than just a suntan so they might duplicate some of the successes that we have been enjoying here on Maui. Now, over the years, since 1991, I have seen many things and many technologies. In fact, uh, Uh, Solar Thermoacoustic Cooler Dryer. Big name and never really came out on the market. But imagine taking the sun and uh, heating it and having a gas expand through a closed tube. And when it goes through a passive engine of foil that's wrapped in a way, it creates cooling. Cooling that can be used if we harness that for cooling big spaces like hotels that have huge electric bills and use the waste heat the waste heat to dry things like if in a closed container it could be a, a large dryer you know you've seen people dry produce and uh, the main impetus at the time was there was a disease in the papaya crop and papayas weren't allowed to be shipped off island because there are all kinds of potential things. But it could be shipped in a dry state, and it would solve the problem on two fronts. So that was brought up then. Obviously, you've not heard about it, but that's just an example of what was a technology. We're talking about 1991, two, three. 
1992, people that were forming a Green Party came to me and said, you have environmental ideas, but to make things happen, we have to have a political party with Green. And it's the thing in Europe, and it's something that can catch on here. So I said, okay, I'll run. And when I ran, I was living in West Maui, living in Lahaina at the time. Um, there were, I was running against the president, the president, the chairman of the county council, Howard Kahuni. But the Democrats pulled a funny and fast one. Howard Kahuni pulled out of the race, and the Democratic committee appointed uh, Dennis Nakamura as their candidate. And uh, Dennis Nakamura was running against Butch Suarez, who was the Republican at the time. And when I got 11% of the vote, Butch Suarez was sure that I got all those votes that would have had him winning the election. I don't know if people that at that time were green and environmental would have been both voting for Butch Suarez, but I was aware about third-party candidate thing. Uh, here we have another year. Robert Kennedy is running against, it looks like, uh, Trump and Biden and all the other minor candidates, minor again. And Robert Kennedy may not have enough votes and enough states where he can be on the ballot to make a difference, but there's that question of the people that vote for Kennedy would be pulled from another candidate. And I, over the years, have always recognized that I didn't really know. And this year, um, sadly, in my opinion, sadly, we have two major party candidates, neither one I like. So um, very little can be said. I don't really know where our country is going, but it takes all of us to always be on top of things and be outspoken and uh, express our opinions I hope in a gentle and diplomatic way so that we can come to terms and agree on things to be able to move forward and bring progress and good quality of life for everyone, not only the rich, you know. So the um, reason I'm bringing that up, the Maui Arts and Music Association, MAMA, we created a show um, in 1994 called Mama Presents, Maui Arts and Music Association Presents. And I continued and did interviews and covered a lot of different events on Maui. And my partner, Ariel, was doing interviews with some of the people in her spiritual and medical alternative community. And we were doing this for years. And uh, yeah, it's always amazing when I see people of all ages coming up to me and saying, I remember you, yours, that guy on television. In 1994, I ran for mayor for part of the race, and then I switched to council. Again, I switched to council because I thought it was uh, going to be a close race between Goro Hakama and Linda Lingle, and I knew that I didn't really have a chance of winning, and I didn't want to spoil... One sec, let me pick up a pencil... I didn't want to spoil uh, the future of Maui by being a candidate to kind of shift the vote. So I dropped out of that one. I got it. And I ran in council. And it was really funny. There were surveys done and questionnaires. And I was running against the guy. Many of you probably still remember Wayne Nishiki. In fact, he's still probably running farmer's market somewhere. I'm not sure where he is now, but really good guy, uh, very progressive, very outspoken, and a real character. You know, there was one time where uh, he wore chains into a courtroom for then Senator Rick Reed and a thing, and he was always outspoken and voting. The council at that time was heavily weighted toward growth and building and the time they weren't considering with uh, at least in my mind responsibility for some of the uh, other things and Wayne would stand up but he did it in a dramatic way that was controversial and maybe it was fun for him and he knew that he was doing it 
But uh, I, it wasn't too controversial. And over the years, I thought that we could talk rather than be a sideshow. And so I ran for a couple of times, and then I thought, you know, I could be talking to people on the air. And so I started doing uh, interviews of different things and people. Up at now at MauiNeutralZone.com, you will see a search engine there. And uh, you can search by keywords and by shows because we've had well, the political interviews I did were up close and personal. And the uh, M Mama Presents was all kinds of different events and some interviews. And then Maui Neutral Zone, the Neutral Zone, and you'll see other categories there. Ariel's World, where she did lots of interviews of uh, different people. So all that is up there. And that really, funny but true, covers 30 years. 30 years. And so um, that was 1994, 91, I started the nonprofit. And here we are 30 years later. And although we have lots of environmental groups on Maui doing all kinds of things here on Maui and making some progress, and some people think that our mayor and the past mayor and the past mayor before that were doing things that um, were positive and progressive, there are still some very major issues that have never been addressed. And um, um, I am obviously not going to take them on. I took them on through conversation. I even ran for um, office again here the last election round, and uh, it came in seventh out of seven. And I thought, wait, why am I doing this? Uh, none of that. And the, the talking on the TV, we're on public access TV. It's not like we have any kind of mass viewing audience. We have a viewing audience. We're happy to have them. But uh, people aren't sharing the show like they might. And um, so I am making a shift. And I'm not exactly sure how it looks. But Mama Presents may fill in on this space. We may still do the neutral zone. I have a couple of co-hosts. You met Scott Bushnell. And uh, you also met David Gallagher. There are a couple people that I have in mind that will bring on different guests with different topics if I'm not always sitting in this seat. But here um, into the future, I want to focus more on the music and the art. Uh, music, number one, because I not only want to be singing, I want to be introducing other musical artists to the people of Maui and the world, which was the intention when we first started this idea back in 1991. And um, I never, be doing so many different things in my life, I never pursued it. But now my intention is to pursue it. And next week I'm going to have, uh, if she can make it, she's coming back after a trip to the mainland, Louise Lambert. You know, when I first was thinking of this show and I wanted a jingle for the beginning, so I thought to myself, dun, 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 dun. Dun 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 da 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 boom. And so I went to my friend Louise and Louise played it, and that's how you see playing it at the beginning of each show and the end of each show for all these now years. You know, what's that ending about? You know, well you you have a nice friendly environment, but there's always something coming in. I used a lightning bolt to show it to try to be a zinger, to kind of break up that uh, conversation. So um, talking about environmental ideas and implementing them at a scale to make a difference um, are two different things. So I want to be uh, not only singing, but introducing different groups with the Maui Arts and Music Association and a portion of that ticket price, a good portion of it, is going to be going toward environmental solutions that we can implement here and share with the world. I fully intend on trying to round up donations from people not only here on island that have money and interests, but on the mainland, because Maui, as a popular travel destination, 
has a lot of people that would still like people coming to these islands. But in this world that is crumbling as we're watching, we are seeing that many of the things that when we were ahead of our time talking about environmental change coming, when we were ahead of our time talking about things that were happening, we were ahead of our time. And uh, with God's perfect timing, maybe this is it, where we can raise consciousness and raise money and implement some of these solutions here on Maui. And uh, that's where I'm going to reshape my focus. And so whether this becomes a hiatus for the neutral zone or whether we use it for um, showcasing new art and music is still yet to be seen because we have a lot of shows that if replayed, are very valuable and important information, even now, over these last six years and more, but six years of the neutral zone, I've introduced some things here with people that really are powerful and important and could make positive things happen from Maui to the world. You know, having an exportable product that is clean and environmentally safe and responsible would uh, help us address some of the um, the labor here. You know, we need to diversify from tourism, and we've been doing it over time. But it's sadly too much. This island is becoming too much like the mainland in how it looks and acts and decisions. Well, we have a one point three or one point four billion dollar budget something like this, so definitely over a, a billion, I guess. And I watch the real estate market, and wow, the ones that are on the uh, housing market, by our county and our people not implementing additional affordable housing solutions, we are now hugely behind the eight ball. Our rents are high. The cost of housing is astronomical where most people that work here can't afford to buy houses and the people that can are buying their second and third houses and then renting them back at ridiculously uh, ridiculous compared to wages prices and, and values uh, Governor Green just uh, had a, a bill passed so there's, there's going to be allowable a second residential income unit on properties and so that's going to have to change in our Maui code they're going to go through all that so that there can be more rentals because we are sadly short of rentals and all the new construction of rentals are way behind way behind like thousands and thousands and thousands and we see that now anyone that's out there on the rental market sees it after this fire it happened in August 8th in Lahaina the people that have been the most crippled, I believe, is the renters. The owners, yes, but the, the renters even more because many of them lost jobs, lost their place and their stuff, but don't really have insurance and weren't their lives weren't replaced. And uh, housing is sadly short. All the supplemental money from the government that's helping them is sadly going to be costing all of us taxpayers to support something that could have been addressed long ago. So hopefully people will start building second ohanas on their properties and we can bring the, the rental rates down and stop the incredible rise in the prices of housing that are making Maui unaffordable to the Maui people. That's crazy to say, isn't it? Now... I'm taking these headphones off because I don't think I need them right now because it's just me talking. Well, you know, I just want to remind you, we're on KAKU 88.5 FM, the voice of Maui, simulcast on Akaku Maui Community Media, channel 55 on cable. Remembering all our shows can be seen at MauiNeutralZone.com and that there is a uh, search engine there to search shows we've done over the last 30 years, probably a 1,000 shows, something huge. It's been really a, a long run. 
MauiArtsAndMusic.org is the nonprofit's address. We'll see what we're going to shift up there on the web. But I think it's good to know that everything that, that I have should be up on YouTube or Vimeo up on the web. And you can search there by Jason Schwartz and Maui and by names of subjects and likely find a lot of our shows. We're on a couple of channels up there. Anyway, I thought today it's a, an interesting thing. We are in an age of AI, artificial intelligence. You know, I, I have a real mixed feeling about it. Artificial intelligence, from my understanding, is a technology that needs a certain chip. We've seen that. We've seen the NVIDIA become the most profitable or most capital company in the United States, if not the world, but in the United States, passing Microsoft and Apple and Amazon. Why? Because of this chip. And if we're only in the beginnings of seeing AI and we're seeing that kind of a growth, we know we're talking about something that is here to stay. And we can talk about monitoring it, but I always wonder when I see what happened with the COVID-19 virus and I see that prescription drug companies, you know, when they do uh, vaccines, they're immune, they're immune from any lawsuits because the laws were changed. So when we say AI is going to be monitored only until someone finds a way around it, it's like getting products from China. I don't know how many things that I've bought that when you get the product, it's been made in China, but when you track where it's been before it got to you, it went to another country. They do drop shipping in another country that isn't under any kind of tariff restrictions. And then those countries export them to the United States and it saves those China people from not being able to get their products into the United States. And it keeps America in that same place of we don't, we're not blocking any things and our growth of our manufacturing is a sort of a joke at this point because again, we're on a giant catch up but artificial intelligence, which it may be here to stay, think of all the artists out there and the musicians out there and the writers out there, um, just by example, that have written these things that are their intellectual property, and all that's being fed in, into a database. So when you ask a question like, hey, chat GPI or open AI, hi there, let me ask you a question. How do I do this? What's the answer to that? Can you write me a paragraph that says this? Can you look for the best things in the world and then rewrite it in another way? And then it spits the answers out to you. Well, what about all those people and their own intellectual property? For years, we've been seeing, you know, the music business changed where we used to be able to, in some ways, control copying of, of musical artists stuff and then tapes came along and CDs and everything was copied and suddenly we watered down the pay to the artists and and then we now we're talking about something that can use all the intellectual property that's created and create it for all of us users I put in the purpose of the Maui Arts and Music Association and ask for a step-by-step -step plan to help the Maui Arts and Music Association achieve its purpose. And I'm going to spend some time today putting it out on, on here, um, mostly because this is not AI. What it's telling us to do involves real people, and those real people are you, our listeners, and people that you share it with. So I thought it was really powerful because... They put it in steps, so here it is. Step one, define specific environmental projects. Remembering we wanted to promote art, music, and culture and educate people about environmental solutions to create a self-sustainability model using Maui as an example 
and uh, have that shared with the world, remember, okay? So we identify specific environmental projects that align with our missions and goals. We consult with local experts and community members to determine the most pressing environmental needs. I could sit here and tell you a few that I know are really pressing. Again, alternative housing and different ways to build housing that's cheaper and uh, more affordable. Uh, renewable energy technologies, ways to grow things better and more economically without pesticides, ways to raise water from the air to create power. Those are just a few of the areas. So to, there are solutions already that exist. For example, we did shows about the Oluwalu and their dumping, which I think is still going on, of toxic waste that they say they're going to move. But it is really a problem. So uh, what do you do with waste? Well, there are as many solutions that we were posing over those shows that didn't come from us, came from different people around the world who already were showing these things, but they couldn't be done because of what? Because FEMA had their own plan, and these things weren't on the list, and they make it very hard to change that list, and so th many of those things are dragging behind. But us as private industry, if we raise the money and we supplement development of these technologies here, we can have them because even though they may not be on a list of someone that has the big money, we can prove them out and show where they make economic sense and scale and really help affect and create a better world. And uh, that's really why the next step is really important to me. That was step one, define the environmental project. Step two is set fundraising goals, the amount of money needed to fund these projects, and then set realistic fundraising goals for each event and campaign. Well, this is ongoing, and being that we want to be involving the world and we want to share the music and the art with the world, we're going to be finding people on the mainland and all throughout the world that want to be supportive of what we're doing here, because this could be a real boon for many industries and many people wanting to start solutions that make sense and make economic sense. Then we plan these events and we organize them, concerts, exhibitions, and events that showcase local artists and musicians, and we integrate the environmental themes and messages into these events. You can see with social media, that's great. But somehow, people enjoy live events. You know, I, you can see that they charge an incredible amount of money for tickets, again, because the musicians that are in these concerts can't get the revenue they used to over social media. The whole system has changed, and they don't get the kind of pay. So in live ticket prices, they sock it to you. Well, we want to have lower ticket prices, but... We also want to be somewhere in the middle so we can raise money for these environmental solutions. Then we're going to establish partnerships and collaborate with local environmental organizations and businesses to amplify their impact. And we're seeking sponsorship and donations to support these events and projects. That's where many businesses here on our island and around the world can get involved with this. Then we promote these using social media, email marketing, and local press to promote the events and initiatives, and we create engaging content highlighting the connection between art, music, and environmental stewardship. I think it's very interesting. Here we are in 1994, 1991, when I started this Maui Arts and Music Association. That was our mission and purpose then. Isn't that amazing? Some 30 something years ago, where the arts and music and environment, when I first announced this, people said, wait, we put art, music, energy, environment, and tourism right in our logo at the time. And people said, oh, you can't tie it with tourism. People are against tourism. We all are not against anything. They can all work together hand in hand. And that's still true. But here we are 33 years later, they still recognize what I said 33 years ago. I feel a little sad that Maui didn't implement these things before we were at a crisis level. <coughs> uh, 
but we are, and we're doing our best. And that, by the way, I want to give a shout out. If you see someone that's hurting, try to help them. You can send them down the street to the agencies, but these agencies are significantly overtaxed and underworked, meaning they don't have enough people to be able to address some of the needs, and they don't have some of the solutions in place to address those needs. So if you see someone that's hurting, please help them, please. Now we want to engage our community in volunteer opportunities and workshops and educational programs and foster a sense of ownership and responsibility for these environmental projects. So far, you can see that all I'm doing is putting down a list of what our community should be doing together. The Maui Arts and Music Association really is just the name for this plan of implementing environmental solutions and using our artists and musicians and promoting them and having them paid and be known on a global level f to be able to progress our environment and our economy here in these islands. Right along then, we're going to be evaluating the progress on these projects, and we're going to continually improve and gather feedback from the community, the artists, the partners, and refine and adapt our strategies to optimize impact and growth. Now, this sounds like any business plan, but the difference here is we have some environmental projects in mind, and we want the community to jump in with us because um, we, I really believe, and I think we've seen it over time, that our community needs to be attracting people from the world to hear for more than just tourism. You know, you've heard in recent years, people are now going to different places in the world. We, for a long time, we had a lock on uh, Condé Nast survey. Somehow, Maui was coming out the best place in the world to travelers. Well, that's changing. Our prices have gotten higher and higher and higher. Did I say higher? Higher. And uh, now we're not really affordable. We're getting affordable to the super rich. And you know, if Larry Ellison and the people that can afford to go to the, the hotel in Lanai and these hotels in Maui at very high prices are not the common traveler. And again, I don't know how Maui is going to support itself unless the prices of real estate say high. We, we get so much money from our real estate taxes, and we get so much money from the taxes on people coming here. We need to find other solutions that make things comfortably affordable. And that's what these environmental solutions that I'm talking about will do, that we can then not only enjoy by their benefit here in Maui, but again, share it with the world who desperately needs to be hearing from people where we don't have to get approval from some group that has money that's going to support their programs. You know, I mean, many people think that the COVID uh, vaccine was all responsibly done, and now they're finding that many of the people that, that were getting sick and died, uh, you know, I just read this yesterday in a, in a what do we say, in an article. The, the COVID shots, uh, you know, they can't sue these manufacturers. But a lot of truth is coming out that wasn't considered truth for all these years. We, we were finding that people were afraid to stop the solution that was ongoing there. But then we also learned that having natural immunity, again, we don't want to go off on a tangent, but a lot of the things that we see and hear in the media, we already know are controlled by those that own and control the media. So... In that way, I'm very happy that I've been here on Public Access TV to be able to put out a more open message, a little more free. We had a couple of interviews with people um, that got us thrown off the air on YouTube a couple of times, and we're not looking to be thrown off the air. We just want the audiences all over 
to be more uh, careful at what they're listening to. And what's that expression? Prove it to me, baby. Prove it to me before we jump into the deep end of the pool with a lot of things in our world. So, you know, we still have plenty of time here, and I'm going to be talking for a long time. I'm going to do what I'd like to do, and that's going to be, I'm going to play music. First of all, I think you're going to be talking to her next week, and she'll tell us about, Louise Lambert has written songs, but this song, which won uh, a festival song title in Canada, it's a couple of decades ago already, but I really think this song is something, if I start recording, I know I'd like to be recording it again. It's called Peace in Our Hearts. Every day worlds are born and worlds die Seems like now the world's so small We see it all right here on our TV and Seems like the more we bridge the distance The harder it becomes for us to see Full of all the world's a stage For actors in a play With an ancient script of fear and doubt and green to rise another page to find a better
for peace in our hearts, for peace in our world, for peace in our country. It starts with peace in our hearts. I sure think that's the biggest message. Uh, last week, I had Bodhi B on from uh, Doorway into Light, the Death Store. And uh, he said it, grief is love. Everything is love. And uh, we keep forgetting that we are all one. That message is such a big message. And it's sad that when there's a crisis, people, many people, pull together and suddenly become one and affiliate together in ways they never would. They always could, but never would before. Well, I'm hoping that what we do through all that we do is raise consciousness and create a platform of love. You know, it sounds airy-fairy to those that uh, don't really, I, you know, think alike to how we do. And I'm hoping that we can come together, like in this year, where we're coming upon an election season that should be, from all accounts, a very ugly ground where they're going to be slinging a lot of mud left and right and center at each other and uh, polarizing people. I am really just want to throw that out the window. So that's why I like to think we can find solutions that can bring up the economy and bring up a feeling of well-being in people so they don't attack each other, so they spend more time in contemplation of making this a better world so that their children and their children's children can live together in peace. I mean, how clear can it be? We uh, watch things that are just horrific. And the news just seems to want to focus, I guess, uh, things that are controversial and difficult are um, more media uh, give more media attention than really I think they deserve, but you know, we're, we're coming. You know, you've seen all these different things over the years. Good, good, uh, good times TV and sharing good things. It's not quite as sensational. But like I said, I think that our music and our art and our established artists and musicians who will come and be supportive of this also help me introduce some of these local Maui artists and bring people from all over the world into the spotlight under the notion, which we'll do, of raising money to implement environmental solutions as an example to the world. And um, I'm very excited about what can be. I've always been excited about what can be. I've been putting that carrot out in front of myself now for more than 30 years, way more now. But, and um, I just know that it's time to raise the money from individuals who don't see things as, as economically possible yet, who need to see them implemented in a place that's so remote like we are that if we do it here, it can be done anywhere else in the world. So that, that's the thought, that we can be a bridge and a real gentle and loving bridge. There, you know, we are now seeing that if there's a war between China and the United States, or if there's uh, North Korea uh, does attacking and Russia's involved and China might get involved, and China fighting the Philippines and Ukraine and all of Europe, it's only a matter of time between all of this stuff comes tumbling down. So we would like to be able to propose solutions that'll be in people's minds and they'll be seeing it here on Maui because when all that kind of stuff happens, we're going to be a potentially very isolated island chain out here and we need to be doing self-sustainable things here. 
So what better place to implement some of these solutions to show the world? In the meantime, I hope whoever is holding the uh, decision buttons can stop nuclear solutions. Can st I'd like to see no more fighting. I'm sure that many of you would like that, but some of you recognize, like when we recognized it in the Second World War, we were standing up for the actual civilization as we know it uh, against a very tyrannical and central figure who preached hate and division. In our next coming election, you probably are going to see a lot of that conversations that are hate and division. Just remember that we can do it a better way and be part of that with me. Let us become the us and let us, through all of us, through musicians and artists, those that have already had success that don't need to think about big money. Big money, the number keeps changing, but isn't it just a quality of life that we'd like to see on this planet for everyone? Well, that's what we're going to try to continue to promote, and we'll see what form it takes. It may come back to the, like these interviews, like I said, with other co-hosts, as well as me in continuing interviews. But I think that we are going to focus on shows so that we might raise the consciousness and money through music and art. I just think that's the best way. You know, I, I remember it was 25 years ago. I remember sitting in Diamonds. Diamonds is actually still here in Kihei. And I was sitting at a table with some friends, musicians, that were playing on stage and that was, you know, I didn't really know Amy Gilliam. I really don't know her very well at all right now. But over these years, you know, we acknowledge each other and I've watched things go. Well, I would like to think that Amy Gilliam would be part of, or Amy Hanayali, I guess now, would be part of this notion that music and art can raise money to create solutions. And she, like other successful artists, can help create a showcase for other musicians and artists to be shown to the world. We uh, see some Maui musicians that have made it there in the world, but we're going to try to create another outlet that as it's doing it is going to bring solutions here for all the people of these islands. And uh, that to me is um, a goal that spreads a little more broadly than some of the artists that have, really, they've lived their life, but their solutions um, haven't been as much of a we as they um, might have been. Well, n now we don't have to prove to everyone that these things are needed. Uh, only people that deny climate change are people that are not in a heat wave or in a flooded area that has never seen heat like this before these heat domes and all that's going on along the United States and these floods that are happening at levels that have never been before. This climate change can't be denied, cannot be denied. And uh, you know, there's some that say, oh, it would happen anyway. That's the way the earth... Bull, just simply bull. You know, and um, it's almost a pity, or absolutely a pity, that we can't grow up and start loving each other and start helping each other with all that energy that we use to be selfish. It's just a beyond, it's beyond understanding, you know. We, you know, they, we talk about, the Christians talk about that Jesus will come and bring a peace beyond understanding. Well, let's bring a peace beyond understanding through all of us recognizing that there is enough. We already have enough. It's just that hoarding of those resources are creating lack in different areas. Well, I'd like to see that change. Some people say, oh, that's a socialist belief. Well, if, if social uh, socialist, I think the terms keep changing. The world keeps changing, but selfish is not part of it. It's just not going to be sustainable. 
Uh, look what's happened here in Maui. I mean, the housing and all these situations. It almost like every time you talk about things, you see that it's through lack of cooperation. You know, we have programs that are quite substantial, but like here, we put all this money toward finding solutions like people putting people in hotels at outrageous rates. Where's that money going, That going into those hotels to keep these things going on the mainland? But how is that helping here? It's helping the people that are getting housing right now, but it isn't helping create solutions that are long-term solutions. It's still not the way to be and go. But we're, we're thinking, well, what other choices do we have? The choices we have is to promote who and what we are, our music and our art and the culture of these islands. We have a host culture here, the Hawaiian culture that could be elevated and showcased around the world and do it together, Hawaiians and non-Hawaiians, all of us together, promoting the beauty of the people and the cultures that were self-sustainable, that are noble, and uh, really b beautiful culture here. And I think it's really time, you know, they create a group like uh, the mayor created another department for Hawaiian. Well, we're happy to work with them and share with them, but we would like to showcase it to the world and where it can become, uh, what's the world, what's the word? It can become uh, an example of all people working together to create solutions for everyone. And I think that's really super important. Super important. Oh, here's a song. Now, you've heard this song before, and I could give you a long explanation, but listen to the words. See if it doesn't make you want to unlock the hope. <laughs> When people call me during the show, I know they're not watching, you know? Isn't that funny? Let's get that song on again. We'll find a way. And we'll see what just happened. Isn't that interesting? Okay, here we go. No, it's not playing. Well, unlock the hope. We'll play something else first. How about this one? Stardust Road. When I lived out in the country, I used to dream of money and fame. So me and my girlfriend, Marco, came out to L.A. And while Marco was a waitress, and I was a fixing car, we kept it all together, pretending we were stars. Singing the rock and roll We would go out by the highway To a make-believe place called Stardust Road And we made believe it was spotlights From the cars passing on their way The roar of the engines was our crowd As we got up on the stage The trees are full not to leave and if anyone could see we gave them a memory to last for ever well now Margo is in the movies and my album has just gone gold the phone's been ringing off the wall and I can't find time alone so when Marco's tired of interview and I can't sing another song, we go back out to the highway, to the place we still call Stardust Road. And we make believe it's spotlights from the cars passing on their way. The roar of the engines was our crowd as we 
I stopped it before the long vamp at the end. Stardust Road, written by Don Gear and me, but uh, that was a long time ago. We made believe it was spotlight, spotlights, and we played for free. Why? Because it keeps us free and keeps that dream alive. You know, I um, I'm happy to have had you here at the show. Next week we have Louise Lambert, and. Um, we here at the Neutral Zone salute you and really appreciate you as listeners. Go up there to MauiNeutralZone.com and listen to our shows again. Thank you for being with us this week. We'll see you again next week. Aloha, everyone.